Okay, we already looked at the graphs of sine and cosine in the previous video, so now we're going to look at the general form of sine and cosine. So instead of grabbing the amplitude and the period from the picture like we talked about before, instead we're going to, we want to wait until we can grab that information off of the formula itself. So here's how you're going to do that. This is what the general form of sine and cosine looks like. I have A cosine BX plus C. Now you might have in the book, depending on what book that you're using, you might have a plus D on the end and that would be a uh, vertical uh, transformations where you're going up and down. We're not going to focus on those uh, for these videos, so I'm not going to have a D in this case. I'm just going to look at A, B, and C only. So here's my cosine and here's my sine. My amplitude is always the ab absolute value of A that I have here. My period formula is 2 pi over B. Now why do we have 2 pi? It's because the period of the, of the graphs we just talked about in the previous section, those key points that we had down there, we had the sine graph, uh, so I'll just go ahead and just put this on the board again uh, from, if you, in case you haven't seen the other video. Uh, that was this graph right here. We had the graph of sine look like that or cosine. And we had from, started from zero and we went up to two pi. So two pi would be your period. That's how long it takes that cycle to repeat itself for one cycle of your sine or your cosine graph. So that's why we have a two pi here. And that would be for if I have y equals sine x, so I don't have any number in front of the sine or in front of the x here, that's what the normal one looks like. This goes up to 1 and down to uh, negative 1. So my amplitude would have been 1 in this case because that's how high it is from the x-axis. And I could have done that by taking the absolute value of 1 that's in front of the sine. Um, also, there's a 1 in front of the x. So because there's a 1 in front of the x, that means that your period is always going to be between 0 and 2 pi. Now, if that number gets changed to something else, then that affects my period because now I'm taking my 2 pi and dividing by whatever number is in front of the b. So that's how that's going to be affected. I also have a phase shift. Now phase shift, it would be you're taking the graph and you're moving it left and right. Uh, and that's what this means. You find that by taking the opposite sign of c. So in other words, if you've got a minus sign in the formula, we're going to take the positive version. Opposite sign of c and we're going to do that over b. So the phase shift will actually tell you what the beginning part of the graph is. So like on this graph I drew here of sine, the starting point would be zero. So with a phase shift, maybe it might be moved over to the left or to the right. Uh, and if that's the case, then it would be starting at somewhere different. And that starting point would be the phase shift. So now we've taken a look at these definitions. Let's now look at some examples that, that have us working with pulling the information out of the formula. Okay, I have two problems here that's going to be utilizing the formulas we just talked about before for finding the amplitude, the period, and the phase shift. So here's the example we're going to look at. y equals negative 3.4 sine 5x minus 7. Here are the formulas that we just talked about previously of how we calculate that. Amplitude is the absolute value of a. We have 2 pi over b. Opposite sine of c over b. These are the three formulas that we're going to use for filling in this information. So these are just going to fill in the blanks only. We're not going to do any graphs just yet. Okay, so for this, we need to identify what each of the numbers represent. The, the A would be negative 3.4, your B is 5, and your C is going to be negative 7 here in this case. So when we do absolute value of A, that means that we're going to do absolute value of negative 3.4 and that's going to be 3.4. So 3.4 is the amplitude for this one. Next, let's do period. Period is 2 pi divided by b. Uh, 2 pi is always constant. It's always part of your formula. The b would be the value in front of the x. So you're going to do 2 pi divided by 5. And there's nothing more we have to do with that. We can't reduce this at all. That's 2 pi divided by the b. For phase shift, it says opposite sign of c over b. Okay, so since I have a minus 7 here, I'm going to make it a positive 7. And then we're dividing that by b. The b is the number in front of the x, so it's going to be 7 fifths. So it's positive 7 fifths. That would be the answer that completes the, the first question. Now we're going to do the same thing for the bottom one here, amplitude, period, and phase shift. And we have a new equation we're going to look at. Uh, so amplitude, it's the absolute value of negative one-fifth. Yes, it's possible for you to have a fraction for the amplitude. It doesn't have to always be a whole number. 
Notice that your amplitude, no matter what, it's always positive. And the reason why that is, is because it's always a positive distance, the distance between the x-axis and either the top of the graph or the bottom of the graph in the previous examples we looked at. So it's always going to be a positive number because it's always, distance is always going to be positive. So that's why you got an absolute value there as part of the formula. Period. It's the it's 2 pi divided by b. Now in this case we have 2 pi divided by pi over 2. If we take that and we flip it, that's 2 pi over 1 times 2 over pi. Pi's cancel and you get 4. So in this case my period ends up being a whole number. So again your period doesn't have to always have a pi in it. It might actually cancel and you might get a whole number uh, for your period like we do here. Your phase shift is opposite sine of C over B. Now this number on the end, we're not going to use that. That would be like a D, and I talked about that before. That would be moving the graph up and down, so that's not used at all when we do these three things here. You're going to use this number. Opposite sine of this is plus 2 pi over 3. We're going to do negative 2 pi over 3. We're going to divide this by the number in front of the x. In this case, the number in front of the x is pi over 2. So we're going to take this and divide it by pi over 2. When we do that, we're going to do the flip again. We're going to do negative 2 pi over 3. We're going to multiply it by the reciprocal, 2 over pi. Pi's cancel and we get negative 4 thirds. So negative 4 thirds would be your phase shift. So if your phase shift is positive, that you get your final answer. If it's positive, that means the graph is actually starting at 7 fifths. So the graph is moving over to the right. If your phase shift is negative like it is here, that means the graph got moved over to the left and now the graph begins at negative 4 thirds. So now that we've had some practice by using this, now we're going to go ahead and add the graph. So the next videos we're going to look at have to do with filling out this preliminary information, but then we're also going to take a look at the graph.